Hello guys, hello guys, welcome to Avoid TV live stream. My name is Yukia. If this is your first time here, uh, welcome. Make sure you follow the page. Uh, you can share this live video. Uh, share it on your page and your groups so that your friends can also um, get informed about the devaluary process. Um, I made some updates uh, today on my Facebook page. If you haven't seen them, please take a moment and check it out. I shared some updates about some of the embassies. I shared some updates about some of the embassies. Please, uh, those of you who um, applied for the DV lottery last year, yours is DV 2025. They have not announced the winners yet. These updates are for those who won the lotto last year. Those who are yet to win this year, we don't have any information about it to, for you guys until after the announcement, all right? But one thing that will be important for you if you're somebody who is yet to win the lotto is for you to pay attention and see certain trends so that when you win the lotto, you don't find yourself in some of the predicament that some people have them. Also, for those of you who are yet to win so that when you win, you the wise up and make your moves all right um let me see solomon you're watching from ghana thank you for joining in um is it asatu you're watching from liberia uh it's because i don't know the pronunciation of your first name hi jessilia how are you it's been a long time rich man you're watching from liberia how are you um, yeah i think that's a zambian flag how are you um i am doing so well james how are you dennis how are you you're watching from south africa Thank you so much for joining in. Gloria, how are you? Um, Jacilia, Liberia, how are you? Guys, I am doing so well, okay? Now, let's go to the data and some of the stuff that some people were not understanding when I shared the DV Lutri uh, uh, status update for some of the embassies, okay? I will go straight to the uh, Liberia, okay? Because Liberia is the one that I'm getting a lot of comments from and there might be a little bit of confusion over there okay so liberia at the time that i put the data they have um attended to 417 cases 417 cases guys when you hear cases it means the actual winner right so the devil lottery when you are a winner let's say i win the lotto i have three children it is still one winning lottery ticket. I hope you understand. It is still one winning lottery ticket, even if me and my husband and our six children, it is still one winning ticket. And that one, in, one winning ticket has a case number assigned to it. The case number is just for the winning ticket. Okay. So when I make a post here and I say cases, I am talking about the number of winning tickets that have been scheduled yet for interview by that particular embassy. Okay, so the post that I made on this page today. So when you see that I wrote uh, 175 cases for Abidjan, it means that the number of winning lottery tickets that have been assigned for interview at the U.S. Embassy in Abidjan is 175. Regardless of the number of people who won the lotto, I will go into that part, okay? So, with that, the number of people who have been issued visa, that number has nothing to do with the case numbers. The number of people who have their visas approved, they can be more than the number of cases. The reason is that when I win the lotto and I have five children, a single mother with five children, and we go for interview and I pass the interview and my children also get their visa, we have taken six visas. Six visas. So when I'm telling you about the number of visas that have been approved, it is not the winning ticket. It is the actual human beings who got the visas. So one case can have eight people one case can have one person one case ha can have eight people one case can have three people so the number of visas that are approved they are typically more than the number of cases in most cases i hope you understand 
So with Liberia, 417 at the time that I pulled the, the, the data, 417 cases, but 162 people have been given the visas. Okay. The other information that I did not include in the, in the post was the number of cases that were ready for interview. So when I say Liberia, 417 have been scheduled. It includes the people who have completed their interview. It includes the number of cases that were refused. It includes the number of cases that were refused under 221G. It includes those who are in AP. And it includes those who are yet to see the consular officer be at their own interview. I hope you understand. So the 417 cases, it includes all the people whose winning ticket have been scheduled for interview whether they have completed or they have not completed they are ready okay so whenever you see uh, when i make a post and i say this is the number of cases that have been scheduled i am talking about those who have completed those who have not completed but they have been given an interview appointment those people have been given interview appointment it does not include those who have not received any interview appointment i hope you understand all right aha uh -huh. Um, one thing that I was seeing a lot, I was seeing a lot is that a lot of people are getting refused under 221G. 221G, if you're new here and you haven't heard anything about it, 221G is basically when a consul officer places your case uh, under, it's like temporary refusal, go and bring this document. You forgot to bring your marriage certificate. You did not bring your birth certificate. You did not bring the police certificate that you were supposed to bring because you have visited Nigeria before. You have lived in Ghana before. You have lived in uh, Syria before. You have lived in UAE before. But when you were going for interview, you only took the police certificate from Liberia. You only took the police certificate from Ghana. You did not include the police certificate from the countries that you have lived in that you were supposed to bring police certificate for. So that's when, when you go for an interview and they realize that you have lived in another country and you were supposed to bring police certificate from there and you did not bring one and you don't have any reasonable, any reasonable and acceptable excuse, they will refuse you under 221G and tell you to go and get that document. Go and get the police certificate from that country that you lived in years ago. Go and get that document and bring that. Okay? Another instance could be that somebody goes for interview and you used to be in America. Okay? You were either deported or you were about to be deported and you went back home. So you are supposed to collect your documentation that says they were processing you for deportation the documentation that says that you were in america and you extended your visa stay you are supposed to bring those documents for your interview but then you want to interview with your 10 fingers right you did not bring that document so they can refuse you under 221g and tell you to go and bring that document so some people go and they don't bring it back all right Another thing is that you could uh, take a document, let's say your school certificate there. They look at the school certificate, you know they look, you know, it not they look real to them, okay? Or maybe they've tried their best to authenticate it, but they are having difficulty with your own certificate, right? So they could tell you that uh, you need to go and bring further evidence. Or let's say you went for an interview, you are a married man, a married woman. But the documents that you, you took the interview to show that you are a married woman was not sufficient, right? Maybe you only took your marriage certificate. Your marriage certificate alone will not be justification enough that you are married, especially for us Africans, right? Aha, uh -huh. because of the prevalence of fake documents in our, in our, on our continent. So when you take just a marriage certificate, it is not enough. You need to bring other evidence. I have talked about this so much in videos on my YouTube channel. If you know they know those things, please go there and watch those videos before you go for your interview. Don't go to the interview with your nice face, your 10 fingers, just walking there like that and expecting them to, you know, approve your visa for you. You're supposed to bring evidence to prove that 
who you are and what surrounds your case your marital status your educational background your work history everything you are able to support them with documents the other thing that um, I want to really emphasize for people is that when you're going for the interview, okay, you are not the first person to win Lotto in Liberia. You are not the first person to win Lotto in Ghana. You are not the first person to win Lotto in Senegal or Cameroon. Others have gone before you. Sometimes hear their feedback. I am not talking about the person who won the Lotto in 1993. I am not talking about the person who won the lotto in 19, uh, 2015 because some things have changed. But you have seen some of the interview experience that I've posted on this platform in my Facebook groups. Look at some of the things that the person said they were requested. And then use that to help you, you know, prepare yourself for your interview. If you're from Cameroon, you know the educational requirement. If you don't meet the educational requirement, most of the time, even the embassy themselves, you know, some of the embassies, they will do some live video on Facebook here. They have said it themselves, especially the U.S. Embassy in Yawonde, Cameroon. They have said it in the video here on Facebook. I they watch that video myself. That it is typically difficult to qualify with a job if you don't have the A-level Remember, most of the jobs that qualify for the DV Lotto, most of the jobs are jobs that require a degree. Most of the jobs that qualify for DV Lotto require a degree. But if you did not even pass the senior high school, how are you for enter the university and get a degree in Cameroon? You see the thing, right? So if you are a Cameroonian, you have won the DV Lotto. Somebody they apply for the Lotto for you, but you know that you are a shoe shine guy. You know that you the cell phone card. You know that your job know they qualify. Don't go and waste the money that you have. Sometimes the refusal is because a lot of people do not qualify, but they still want to pursue the journey and say that, let me go and see my fate. Let me go. Maybe God will do a miracle for me. And then you go, go and waste your money. Then now you don't want to go back to church. You said you, you want to go and test God now. But you know you don't qualify. You know you don't even have a job. You are a trader in the marketplace. Okay? You are a trader. You sell pepper in the market. That job will not qualify you for DV lottery. You sell baby pampers. That job no, no go qualify you for DV lotto. So if you know your results are no good, that's what I will tell you that if your results are no good go and sit those papers that were not good so that you can you know use that to defend yourself that oh even though i did not pass the commas even though i did not pass i wrote it again this is it they will consider it i have seen so many people go for interview with you know papers that they sat that those papers again and the embassy gave them the chance but if you don't if you don't rewrite those papers you did not do well at and then you don't have the occupation that qualifies that no will take you away being a driver a driver does not qualify for DV lottery that job alone as a driver it doesn't matter whether you are a professional driver or you are an uber driver or you are, you be a lift driver or you be ordinary taxi driver driver be driver it know the matter if you are a bus driver or a small car tico driver drivers don't qualify for the dv lottery i hope you understand so if you are a driver your only backup plan is to use your education some of you feel like you left school long time ago so you don't want to go and write the exams okay then don't go and waste your money right because the thing is that some people go knowing well that they don't qualify when you go and you get refused then you bring your bitterness and anger to police other people's mind and DV lottery these people they just waste our time why do they uh, uh, require all of these things but you knew now we told you now you said you know they hear anything you went there and now you 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 the thing they clear your eyes now you want to come and pollute people who who qualify who are excited about the process now you want to come and pollute their minds 
right? Because you, yours know they go well. You who know they hear anything. When we're telling you, go and write your commas again. Eh, my brother who won the Dimitri in 1997, when he went for the interview, they didn't even ask anything about commas. 1997, Gary, if they give you Nana, you go eat. Please, let's be realistic. I hate to see that all these people who have been refused, I was like, ah, that's money. Each person that is refused, $330. Let me give you some of the numbers. Liberia, 74 people have been refused their visas. Multiply $330 by 74. That will be small money. In um, Abu Dhabi, 22 people have been refused visas. Multiply that by $330. In Abidjan, 27 people have been refused visas. Multiply that by $330. In uh, Ghana, nine people have been refused. Multiply by $330. In Freetown, 40 people have been refused. Multiply that by $330. That's a lot of money. And you know, in, in most of our countries in Africa, well, with the exception of Liberia, the dollar to our local currency will be small money. So that's a lot of money. Even, we are not even talking about the medicals that you paid for right so that's why you need to prepare well for the interview you need to make sure that you qualify that's why when it comes to the DV lottery registration i tell you that please make sure you qualify or you know that okay these are the requirements i plan to reset my paper i plan to do this you know what you're going to do to qualify by the time you get you win i hope you understand we all do that sometimes. Sometimes we apply for a job and we are like, oh, this job says you need to have this certificate. Okay, I'm going to write that exams in two weeks' time. By the time I get the interview, I have the, the certificate to go, right? You have to plan that this is how I plan to meet that requirement. You can't sit there and just pray for angels to bring you that certificate, my people. Taking a fake certificate to the interview will not go well with you, especially if you are from Sierra Leone. We heard of uh, uh, an instance where somebody took a face certificate to the uh, interview in Freetown and they called the, the purpose, they called the police to come and handle that person, right? You never know when that situation might happen in Ghana. You never know when that situation might happen in uh, Yaoundé. You never know when you will show up to the U.S. Embassy in Abidjan with your fake marriage certificate and they go hand you over to the police. You never know, right? You don't want to be the first you don't want to be the first fool for them to catch right so make sure that you do the right thing all right all right thank you so much and those of you who are looking forward to may 4th i am excited with you guys so you know i thought i would be in in training by that time but see what god has done right i'll be home with you guys so we'll be here to make the noise to be happy with you to rejoice with you but pay attention to what is happening to dv 2024 so that you know they do you know things that will harm your case all right love you guys god be with you bye bye make sure you subscribe to the youtube channel some of you you there here you know they subscribe to 42k people is it 42 or 45k yeah i think 45k followers on facebook how come it's 17k on youtube now please go over there subscribe this thing you don't you know they need to learn fair go there and subscribe